Dry eye is a frequent disease that affects some 15 to 20 percent of the population aged over 60 years. The disease causes considerable discomfort to the patient and may deeply impact quality of life. A deficiency of the lacrimal system results in degradation of the protective film on the surface of the eye, making it extremely sensitive to external aggressions. The eye thus becomes incapable of correctly moistening, nourishing and protecting the cornea. The symptoms range from general discomfort and burning, or itching sensations, to a veritable handicap with considerable impact on quality of life and even visual function. La nosologie de la sécheresse oculaire a beaucoup changé ces dernières années. Nouvelle physiopathologie, nouvelle définition, nouvelle manière de comprendre ce qu'est l'œil sec. Il y a quelques années, un groupe d'experts a essayé de redéfinir ce qu'était la sécheresse oculaire. Le premier élément, c'est que, au-delà du simple nom de syndrome sec, on envisage plutôt l'existence d'une maladie de l'œil sec, c'est-à-dire un véritable phénomène de souffrance, d'atteinte de l'œil sous l'effet de cette sécheresse, quel qu'en soit le mécanisme. The lacrimal film plays preponderant roles in protecting cornea and improving visual function. Overall, the film consists of three layers. The superficial lipid layer, which prevents the natural evaporation of water. The intermediate layer, highly aqueous and secreted by the main and accessory lacrimal glands, which is characterized by its content in nutrients, enzymes, antibacterial agents, healing factors and a soluble mucin gradient. In depth, a hydrophilic mucus layer that coats the corneal epithelium. Mainly secreted by the conjunctiva, the mucus contributes to the regular distribution and adhesion of the superficial layers by binding the membrane-associated mucins throughout the ocular surface. The mucins tie into a complex network of glycoproteins, thus ensuring the stability of the lacrimal film. C'est vrai que l'œil est le siège de d'interaction très complexe avec les paupières, avec l'environnement où interagissent le film lacrymal, la conjonctive, la cornée. Et on comprend bien que de nombreux acteurs vont intervenir et que certains d'entre eux sont particulièrement sensibles à l'inflammation ou particulièrement producteurs d'inflammation. Donc comprendre comment arrive une inflammation, comment elle se développe et comment on peut la bloquer est évidemment une des questions clés de la nouvelle approche de la sécheresse oculaire. Lack of tears may induce an inflammatory reaction that in turn also results in lacrimal component changes and tear impairment. Lacrimal insufficiency, which is responsible for hyposecretion, induces a decrease in the aqueous layer, together with a deficit in numerous nutritive and protective factors. Irregularities emerge. The water deficit results in a lacrimal hyperosmolarity, which induces metabolic stress. The eyelids add mechanical stress and the surface of the cornea deteriorates. Another mechanism also underlies the distress of corneal cells, dysfunction of the mucus secreting cells due to persistent allergy or chronic eye drop preservative use or triggered by an acute phenomenon such as conjunctivitis or a surgical procedure impairs the mucin layer. Mucocytes become progressively less numerous. Hydrophilic potential is lost. The mucus layer becomes less dense and mucins no longer bind. The aqueous layer adheres poorly and the lacrimal film becomes unstable. Dry zones develop and hyperosmolarity emerges. The biological cascade is readily understood. Lack of tears or lacrimal instability induces hyperosmolarity, which gives rise to cell distress and responses whose long term results consist in overstimulation in an inflammatory mode, neurogenic inflammation. Nerve stimuli are generated by corneal dry spots. The corneal nerves receive nociceptive signals and report the cell stress message to the brain. The immune system actively reacts by attracting and activating leukocytes. Inflammatory cells circulate in the blood along the vessel walls. The cells enter the interstitial medium by diapodesis and then contribute to the inflammatory reaction. They frequently assume a dendritic shape in the tissues. Cytokines are synthesized and the inflammatory reaction is maintained in the lacrimal gland, conjunctiva and cornea. The inflammation is toxic for the corneal and conjunctival cells and particularly toxic for goblet cells. It is almost as though the inadequate or poor quality tears had become toxic.
The loop is self-sustaining. The lacrimal film deficiency induces an inflammatory reaction, which maintains or aggravates tear film deficiency. A second self-stimulating loop may also be defined and involves the meibomian glands. When those glands do not function correctly, the meibum that they secrete, which is composed of a complex mixture of lipids and lipoproteins, is defective and contains free fatty acids that are harmful to the surface of the eye. The subjacent aqueous layer is no longer isolated and excessive evaporation occurs. In that poorly lubricated hyperosmolar environment, blinking becomes a mechanical stress and the cornea suffers in the same way as it does in the event of hyposecretion. In addition, when Mabum is pathological, it becomes a site of microbial and sometimes demodex proliferation. The margins of the eyelids become inflamed and the lipid film is degraded under the supplementary action of bacterial lipases and esterases. These two boucles are two examples dans lesquels on perçoit qu'un patient qui entre le doigt dans cet engrenage se retrouve détruit par un véritable cercle vicieux où, en faisant très court, plus la qualité des larmes est mauvaise, plus le film maximal est de mauvaise qualité. Ce véritable cercle vicieux, c'est ce que je définirais comme étant la maladie de l'œil sec, à la différence de cet amas de symptômes divers et variés qui définiraient plutôt le syndrome de l'œil sec, c'est-à-dire des symptômes des signes cliniques, mais pas véritablement cette maladie biologique qui s'auto-entretient et qui est auto-stimulée. Unfortunately, the patient rapidly falls victim to the vicious circle. The inflammation may be secondary to wearing contact lenses, a hostile environment, certain drugs, the preservatives in eye drops, menopause or allergy, or even be triggered by an acute phenomenon. Si l'on comprend que l'œil sec est une maladie inflammatoire, s'ouvre dès lors une multitude de perspectives, de compréhension, des mécanismes et donc de meilleures possibilités de traiter. Aujourd'hui, dans certains pays, la sécheresse oculaire se traite par des collyres à base d'anti-inflammatoires. C'est une approche plus ou moins empirique avec des corticoïdes, avec des collyres de cyclosporine qui ne sont pas encore disponibles en Europe mais qui vont bien démontrer que la gestion de l'inflammation dans la sécheresse oculaire est véritablement une approche particulièrement importante.